about adolescence. Carl, the colored I have heard adolescence described as years, the only road to adulthood. And, child and of course, I don't family. need to add to that that sometimes it's a rocky road. But I think Dr. Bradding this morning might tell us why so many kids hot rod down this road when they're not even old enough to have a driver's license. part of being a courier? Oh, fuck. Uh, the cars. People driving the cars. The rain. What's the worst part of being a courier? Worst part of being a courier is probably dealing with the fucking cushions or getting stopped by police running a red light when you're on the move, but bad weather. <laughs> Starbucks, Forever 21, that area. Fucking this dude, butt ass naked, taking his his feces, his shit, and slinging it on the fucking Starbucks wall, dude. Everybody drinking their fifteen dollar coffees like some bozos, and you see this fucking guy just like ruining their morning. It's fucking hilarious. It's awesome. Well, what I heard was uh, uh, dude used to be out here in the streets uh, from Cali. Caught that fool, the surfer bum. They killed this dude on the bayou for some Vienna sausages. Crazy shit, man. And he was cool as fuck. Uh, selected a couple of shots off him, sleeping, knocked out on that cushion. And he, I'd always give him a dollar when I see him, but yeah, dude, like the dude, they, they, they 86 that fool for some fucking weenies, man. It's fucking wild, man. Really wild.
a cloak of shame covers this man, and only supreme light will wash my body clean. But how could that light possibly reach me with the thick clouds of indecency that surround my poor soul? So I carry my wrongdoings on my back like some kind of tormented hiker lost in the hills of misfortune, looking desperately for that peak to rescue him from the valley of depraved habitual self-pleasuring. But again, I find nothing except for sweaty, devastated loneliness and a thousand judging eyes staring back at me. I got my phone hooked up right here. And I guess my fucking shirt or something got caught right here in the side of it. And it completely just came undone and fell off into the road. So my phone's sitting in the middle of the road. And there's like a shit ton of traffic behind me. About 10 cars run this motherfucker over. Everyone's honking at me like, get the fuck out of the road. I'm like, dude, you're running over my fucking... You're running over my iPhone 10, you motherfucker. Get off of it. This is 1996. It used to be different. I mean, it was like a family. I don't care how much money you make, as long as you're like, as long as you're happy, it doesn't matter the amount of money you make. Who wants to be miserable? If you're not, if you're not having a good time, what are you doing it for? No reason. Paid my car to charity in 2006 as a tax write-off. Don't pay taxes. But. 30 foot fall though, that's my that's my catchphrase. Two wheels, one dark lord. Somebody jump off the top of the Montague and hit the fire escape, and then she shredded like a uh, hamburger meat. That was pretty gnarly. She was like dripping down. It was like pretty good. almost actually one of them almost landed on me. The guy jumped by the Houston Public Library. It was like a hedge fund manager. I came around the corner and he's like, "Yeah, he just hit the ground." And I was like, "Was he sleeping?" Oh, we found a body floating in the bayou right there. We used to smoke right over there by the crypt, by the uh, crypt tonight, by the crypt. We found a body floating. We're like, oh, hey, look, buddy. It's usually about it, like, usually dead things. Disappearing like this. Yeah.